हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी शैल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट क्रॉनिक इन्फेक्शियस डिजीजेज इन विच वी शैल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एक्टिनोमाइकोसिस लेप्रोसी सिफिलिस एंड एग्स ऑल दीज आर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ क्रॉनिक डिजीजेज द फर्स्ट इज द एक्टिनोमाइकोसिस द एक्टिनोमाइकोसिस इट इज कॉज्ड बाय विच ऑर्गेनिज्म इट इज एक्टिनोमाइसिस इजराइली इट इज एन एनारोबिक ग्राम पॉजिटिव branching filamentous organism it is also known as it is also known as ray fungus it is uh, this organism it is present in the oral cavity normally in the tonsillar crypts and dental cavities and it become pathogenic in the presence of the trauma these and actinomyces infection these are commonly polymicrobial so these actinomyces species that causes human disease they are not found in nature but they are present in the normal flora of the oropharynx git tract and female genital tract so this is not an exogenous infection no person to person spread of the pathogen occurs so these actinomycoses they are component of oral flora including periodontal pockets dental plaque tonsillar crypts so with the trauma surgery or any infection so it takes the advantage of injury to penetrate the mucosal barrier regarding the culturing of actinomyces species these species grow in the enriched medium with the brain heart infusion and they may be added in growth by atmosphere of 6 to 10% with ambient carbon dioxide what is the best temperature for their growth they grow best at 37 degrees celsius so they can cause oral and cervical facial diseases that are commonly associated with the dental procedures trauma or oral surgery or any dental sepsis the pulmonary infection that arise after aspiration of oropharyngeal or gastrointestinal secretions who are the people at risk with actinomycosis those having a dental disease or recent dental surgery for the jaw abscess second having lung abscess in which the liquids or solid they are sucked into the lungs third patient having bowel surgery for abdominal abscess fourth swallowing fragments of chicken or other bones that can cause abdominal abscess for women it is commonly seen having an intrauterine contraceptive device in place for many years so these are the people who are at risk with the who are at risk with this actinomycosis the most common type of actinomycosis is the cervical facial actinomycosis so these these species they may be seen in the tonsillar crypts gin, gingival dental crevices so the patient will show history of poor dentition with oral surgery or dental procedure or trauma to the oral cavity other factors related are chronic tonsillitis mastoiditis and otitis that are the risk risk factors for the actinomycosis the osteomyelitis can develop if the infection it extends to the facial and the maxillary bones the mandible it appears to be one of the most common site for the osteomyelitis so the organism it will produce a subacute or chronic inflammation for many months to years and it will produce a lumpy jaw so cheek mandible jaw salivary glands they all results in suppuration multiple subcutaneous nodules may be seen the nodules rupture resulting in multiple discharging sinuses so the discharge sinuses will contain sulfur granules 
which are the gram positive mycelia that are surrounded by gram negative clubs the lymph nodes are not involved intestinal actinomycosis here the infection develops after the gastrointestinal mucosal integrity that is broken from the surgical procedure or the trauma abdominal actinomycosis appendicitis with the perforation that is most common predisposing event it it is most common as result of right sided abdominal infection that is more common than the left sided abdominal infection the clinical features are indistinguishable from those of other infection of cns the thoracic actinomycosis that will involves the lung and mediastinum the patient clinical symptoms would be fever cough and sputum production you will see multiple sinuses that may extend through the chest wall to the heart or into the abdominal cavity now you can do a gram stain to diagnose actinomycosis so on the gram stain you will see a positive branching filaments the sulfur granules that are the diagnostic of actinomycosis so the examination will show sulfur granules in the fluid so they are they are just yellow granules that are made up of clumped organisms remember these sulfur granules they are actually the yellow colored aggregates of microorganism and and it will not contain any sulfur and that's a misnomer they can be absorbed uh, they can be observed macroscopically as well as microscopically now the treatment of actinomycosis the treatment classically begins with the intravenous penicillin for 2 to 6 weeks followed by oral therapy with the penicillin or amoxicillin for 6 to 12 months the patient who are allergic to penicillin can be given tetracycline erythromycin minocycline or clindamycin mepenem or ciftriaxone have been given in the in the treatment of the actinomycosis the next chronic infectious disease is leprosy leprosy other name is known as hansen disease it is a chronic infectious disease that is caused by which bacteria it's mycobacterium leprobacteria why it is known as hansen disease because it was first discovered by dr hansen that is why it is known as the hansen disease what is the shape of this bacteria it is acid fast road shaped bacilli obligate intracellular bacterium the bacteria will affect mainly the nerves and the skin so it will enter the nerve into the schwann cells remember the bacteria this bacteria will have affinity for the cooler tissues it will invade the nerves situated superficially and in the region that are relatively cooler that is the face and the limbs it has low pathogenicity only a small portion of infected people will develop sign of disease after entering the body the bacteria will migrate toward the neural tissue and from there it will enter the schwann cells it is more prevalent in countries like india china nepal brazil etc india accounts for one third of all registered leprosy ca- uh, cases globally who have the greater risk for this infection when a leprosy person will contact other person then there are greater chances of infection it is more likely the patient who are exposed will have leprosy 5 to 8 times more likely than the 12 than the member of the general 
population leprosy occurs more commonly among those living in the poverty region other conditions that reduces the immune function such as malad malnutrition other illness genetic mutations that may develop the risk of developing leprosy what is the mode of transmission of leprosy it is a communicable disease the incubation period between the first exposure and appearance of sign of disease it varies from 2 to 20 years average about 30 years the spread of leprosy it is through the droplet infection that is nasal discharge every 1 cc of nasal secretion that will contains 1 to 2 million lepra bacilli it can occur through the direct contact with the untreated leprosy patient through the damaged skin nasal secretion mucous membrane or the hair follicles maternal fetal transmission it occurs through the placenta or transmission from the milk of the leprosy affected mother to the infant the leprosy can be of two types tuberculoid leprosy or lepromatous leprosy the immune response in leprosy it is either t cell mediated delayed hypersensitivity the patient with a good cell mediated immunity response it develops they develops milder and localized form of disease that is tuberculoid leprosy with the less bacterial load so the milder form is tuberculoid leprosy whereas in patients with the weak or absent cell mediated immunity they developed wide spread disease that is the lepromatous disease with the high bacterial load as we discuss earlier that the bacteria will enter the schwann cells it will start multiplying slowly within the cells multiplying slowly within the cells and it destroys the surrounding or the other unaffected cells so till this stage the person will remain free from sign and symptoms as the as the bacteria bacilli will multiply the bacterial load increases in the body and this infection will be recognized by immunological system so the lymphocytes and the histiocytes will come and invade the infected tissue so there the clinical manifestation at this stage would be involvement of nerves with the impairment of sensation and skin patches if it is not diagnosed and treated in early stages there may be further uh, there may be further progress of the disease that will be dependent upon the patient immunity response if the patient have a good cell mediated immunity then it may develop he may not show any sign or symptoms patient with the sign and symptoms may show nerve lesions that is intermediate form of leprosy tuberculoid polar that is highly resistance or borderline leproid cases whereas with weak immunity will show a higher form of disease that is the leptomatous form of the ridley and jopping classify the leprosy into five groups based on the host immunity the highly resistance is the tuberculoid polar with the least resistance is the leprotus lepromatous polar type apart from them apart from that classification three more forms are included that are intermediate leprosy pure neural leprosy or histoid leprosy there may be the who classification according to that if the that could be possi bacillary or multi bacillary leprosy possi uh, the possi bacillary leprosy are found in people with the good immunity so people with strong immune response are able to destroy large number of organisms and routine skin smears are usually negative in most of them whereas the multi bacillary leprosy it is found in people with poor cell mediated immunity 
so there is widespread lesions in the in the skin nerve and to lesser extent in the other organs it usually spares the central nervous system and upper reproductive system in the female in the absence of treatment the possible uh, the possible bacillary form of leprosy may downgrade to the multibacillary that is from the tuberculoid to the lepromatous through the broad line spectrum the people infected with mycobacterium may show no disease or may show intermediate leprosy and those with a good immunity will show tuberculoid leprosy and with poor immunity will show lepromatous lepro leprosy and the intermediate or the borderline form is the borderline leprosy intermineate leprosy it refers to very early form of leprosy where you will see lymphocytic cell infiltrate and localized and nerve involvement may be present that is strongly suppressive of this disease the other form is tuberculoid leprosy it is seen in the patient with good cell mediated immunity so these are the lesions may be single or few asymmetrical lesions they have a raved border and are generally macular type so these these are the lesions with the raved border showing tuberculoid leprosy the histological features it will, uh, you will uh, the dermal lesion will show granulomatous the dermal lesions will show granuloma resembling hard tubercles that that are composed of epithelioid langhen giant cells and peripheral mantle of lymphocytes the dermal nerves that may be destroyed and infiltrated by the epithelioid and lymphocytes the granulomatous infiltrate will erode the basal layer of epidermis so there will be no clear zone the lepra bacilli they are few and seen in destroyed nerves other form is borderline leprosy that could be borderline tuberculoid or borderline lepromatous or mid borderline form the borderline tuber uh, tuberculoid will have more epithelioid and plentiful lymphocytes and the lepra bacilli they are few whereas the borderline lepromatous will show numerous lepra bacillus and show predominance of histocytes a few epithelioid and irregular lymphocytes the lepromatous leprosy it is seen in patient with poor cell mediated immunity it is a severe form of leprosy the lesions are bilateral symmetrical the sensory loss is less compared to the tuberculoid type the lesions are macular papular and nodular type and are smaller than the tuberculoid lesions what are the other structures that could be seen in the lepromatous leprosy there will be extensive tissue destruction of nasal cartilage with the nasal collapse that will show appearance of saddle nose deformity the eyebrows may be lobed the ear lobes may be thickened there may be lobed upper incisor teeth the forehead skin may be thickened there may be leonine faces appearance the involvement of ulnar nerve at the elbow and the wrist and median nerve at wrist give rise to claw jaw the other clinical features that may be rhinorrhea glove and stocking anesthesia loss of temperature or trophic ulcers in the lepromatous leprosy what is the histology histopathological features you will see lepra cells or vico cells in the dermis you will see there is proliferation of macrophages 
around the blood vessels nerves and dermal appendages so these foamy macrophages they are known as lepra cells the lepra cells or vico cells they are seen in lepromatous leprosy so they are they are seen with acid they are heavy laden with acid fast bacilli and they are generally sh shown with acid fast bacillus staining you will see these this these cells appearance as a cigarette in pack like parallel fashion what is lepromin test it is a not a diagnostic test but it is used to classify the leprosy on the base of immunity re response so the intradermal injection of lepromin that is an antigenic extract that will reveal delayed type hypersensitivity in patient with the tuberculoid leprosy the early reaction is fernandes reaction whereas the delayed reaction it is mitsuda reaction the early positive reaction that occurs in 24 to 48 hours whereas the delayed reaction will appear after 3 to 4 weeks so this test will indicate that the cell mediated immunity is greatly suppressed in lepromatous leprosy while the patient of tuberculoid leprosy will show good immunity response the next chronic disease is the syphilis syphilis it is a sexually transmitted infection that is caused by bacterium treponema pallidum species so which bacteria it is caused by treponema pallidum that is transmitted by the sexual intercourse it was discovered by shodin and hoffman it affects both men and women in age group of 20 to 40 years so the bacteria it is spiral shaped gram negative bacteria with size 10 to 14 micrometer in length the outer membrane of treponema pallidum differ from most gram negative bacteria in a major respect as it lacks lipopolysaccharide has less cytoplasm etc the treponema pallidum it is actively motile moving with a corkscrew motion with bending and flexing but with little translation movement so the mode of transmission it is by sexual intercourse blood transfusion contaminated needles vertical transmission etc so there are four stages that includes primary secondary latent and tertiary stage so the primary stage it is it presents with a single canker that is a firm painless no itchy skin ulceration whereas in the secondary syphilis there is a diffuse rash that occurs frequently involves the palm of hand and soles of feet there may be sores in mouth or vagina in the latent syphilis that can last for years there are few or no symptoms and in tertiary syphilis there are gamma that is soft non cancerous growth there can be neurological problems or heart problems few laws that are involved with syphilis is the number one is the coolies law according to that the syphilit infant could transmit the disease to previously healthy wet nurse but never to their own mother what is kazovitz law the untreated syphilitic mother it tends to improve on her past experience the first is the primary syphilis the primary syphilis it occurs 2 to 6 week after the contact a skin lesion that is canker appears at the site and it contains infectious spirochetes it is classically a single form painless no itchy skin ulceration with clean base and sharp border it may involves from macule to papule and finally to erosion or a ulcer the most common location in the woman it is the cervix penis in the heterosexual men 
the lymph node enlargement frequently occurs around the area of infection the secondary syphilis it occurs approximately 4 to 10 weeks after the primary infection the secondary disease it can affect involve the skin mucous membrane and the lymph node there may be symmetrical reddish pink non itchy rash on the trunk and extremities including the palms and sole it forms flat broad whitish spot like lesion on the mucous membrane that is known as condyloma latum other symptoms may include fever sore throat malaise weight loss hair loss and headache rare manifestations are liver inflammation kidney disease joint inflammation the acute symptom usually resolve after 3 to 6 week the latent syphilis it is defined as having serological proof of infection without the symptoms of disease so it develops after the secondary syphilis it is divided into two one is the early latent and other is the second and other is the late latent stage the early latent syphilis it is defined by who as less than 2 years after the original infection and 2 years after the original infection the person will enter the late latent syphilis it is the early latent syphilis it is infectious as up to 25% of people can develop recurrent secondary infection whereas the the latent phase of syphilis can last many years after which without treatment the 50 to 40% of people will develop the tertiary syphilis the tertiary syphilis it occurs 3 to 15 years after the initial infection it may be divided into three different forms number one is the gambitus form second late neurosyphilis and third is the cardiosyphilis gambitus syphilis or late benign syphilis it occurs at the up to the 46 years after the initial infection so here in this stage you will see is the formation of the chronic gamma that are soft tumor like balls of inflammation they typically affect the skin bone and liver and can occur anywhere the cardiovascular syphilis that occurs 10 to 30 years after the initial infection the most common complication is syphilitic otitis that results in aortic aneurysm formation the third is the neurosyphilis that refer to the infection involving the central nervous system so the involvement of the central nervous system in the syphilis can occur at any stage of infection it may generally occur early or in form of syphilitic meningitis or as late as meningovascular syphilis so the meningovascular syphilis involves the inflammation the last is the congenital syphilis the congenital syphilis is that which is transmitted during the pregnancy during the birth so the common uh, symptoms that develop over the first couple of years include enlargement of the liver and the spleen rash fever neurosyphilis and lung inflammation other other features are saddle nose deformation hygomenarche sign saber sheen or clutter joint what is hygomenarche sign it is unilateral enlargement of the sternoclavicular portion of the clavicle that is seen in the congenital syphilis saber sheen is the malformation of the tibia the clutter joint describe the finding of symmetrical joint swelling seen in the patients with the congenital syphilis the three main dental defect in the congenital syphilis they are hutchinson incisors that is the incisors are screw driven shaped incisors moons molar or bud molars and 
फोर्नियर मोलर्स और मलबरी मोलर्स दैट इज द मोलर्स विद अब नॉर्मल अक्लूजल एनाटमी रिजेंबलिंग मलबरी द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ सफिलिस द सफिलिस इज डिफिकल्ट टू डायग्नोज ड्यूरिंग द अर्ली इन्फेक्शन कन्फर्मेशन कैन बी डन बाई ब्लड टेस्ट और बाय डायरेक्ट विजुअल इंस्पेक्शन यूजिंग द डार्क फील्ड माइक्रोस्कोपी द ब्लड टेस्ट दे आर मोर कॉमनली यूज एज दे आर इजियर टू परफॉर्म नॉन ट्रेपनोमल टेस्ट दे आर यूज फॉर स्क्रीनिंग एंड ट्रेपनोमल टेस्ट दे आर कन्फर्मेटरी द डायरेक्ट एंटीजन डिटेक्टिंग टेस्ट दे आर यूज इन रिसर्च सेटिंग एंड आर एज गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड फॉर द टेस्ट इवेल्युएशन the direct detection method the first is the animal inoculation that is oldest method it is used as gold standard for measuring sensitivity of method such as pcr second dark field microscopy when the lesions are present more specific and easiest method of diagnosis phillis is by direct detection of organism under the dark field microscope other tests that can be carried out are the direct fluorescence antibody test that uses antibody tags tagged with fluorescein that attach to specific villis protein so it will detect and differentiate pathogenic treponema from the non pathogenic treponema so here the organism is not required to be motile however it cannot distinguish between the pathogenic strain of the treponema species the vdrl test it is a flocculation test that detects the antibodies produced by the treponemal infection the other tests are unheated serum resin rapid plasma resin and toledin red unheated serum test the toledin red unheated serum test and rapid plasma resin test antigens differ only in the visualization agent that are ready to antigen for rpr car test size charcoal particles they are ready to the antigen for toledin red unheated serum test the paint pigment particles they are added the vdrl test will measure the agglutination that is the flocculation of the lipid particles that contain the cholesterol and the negative charge phospholipid cardiolipin the non treponal reagent test measure igm and igg antibodies to lipoidal and lipoprotein like material released from the damaged host cells as well as to cardiolipin release from the treponema the treponema antibody test it will detect the antibodies that is produced by the body only after infection with the bacteria that causes syphilis so this type of antibody is detectable in the body earlier than the non treponemal antibody and it remains indefinitely so you can still test positive for the treponemal antibody after completing the syphilis treatment so this means that the treponemal antibody test it cannot distinguish between a current and a past syphilis infection so most of time the treponemal antibody test they are used to screen for syphilis while the no, while the treponemal test they are used to confirm the diagnosis the example of treponemal is fta ab as test that is the fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption test so that that is used to check for presence of antibody to treponemal palladium bacteria so it is indirect so this is the difference between fta abs and fta abs test double staining method the other is treponemal palladium immobilization test the molecular biology test the shortcoming of standard test for syphilis for diagnosis of early primary congenital and neurosyphilis have made the technique based on detection of treponemal dna or antigen so we can use is the dna probes 
that give a positive result limitation are only really that many numbers of trap animals are seen in clinical samples other method are pcr test and rt pcr test the rt pcr has high sensitivity and specificity enzyme amino acid test considered to be suitable for detection of early syphilis management of syphilis it consists of parenteral penicillin is stock for all stages of syphilis the parenteral penicillin is only treatment that is that show efficacious in neurosyphilis hiv and pregnancy uh, tetracycline erythromycin and third generation cephalosporin they have anti treponemal activity treatment for primary secondary and early latent syphilis injection benzathin penicillin if there is penicillin allergy then doxycycline erythromycin or injection ceftriaxone that could be given late latent syphilis injection benzathin penicillin is given for tertiary syphilis injection benzathin penicillin three doses is recommended treatment